2 Timothy chapter 1 and Proverbs chapter 28. 2 Timothy, Paul's last letter. The final words he wrote before God took him home and he writes it to his son. In fact, uh, verse 2, he says to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace. But I want to zero in on verse 4. Uh, I don't know why verse 4 is so precious to me because I think because intimacy and tenderness is not easy for men. And when a man is exposing himself emotionally, it's very important to protect that man. And so in verse four, he says, recalling your tears. And so Paul let the whole world know that this young man wept, wept, sobbed, cried, the last time that his spiritual father was leaving. Now, at that point, Timothy could be a little embarrassed, like, well, you didn't have to tell everyone that I cried. Um, but then Paul's next two phrases completely cover it. It says, recalling your tears, I long to see you. And even then, it's mostly covering Timothy. I long to see you. So, okay, I feel just as tender towards you but then the next line says that I may be filled with joy. And when he says that next line, it's like, okay, you're not thinking about Timothy as weak. You think about, because men honestly can think of tears as weak or, you, you know, oh, that's a little too much emotion. But Paul takes that whole thing and says, oh, I feel just as deeply for you. And let's take this whole thing of tenderness and emotion and tears and let me put an overlaying of, of icing on this cake. And the overlaying of icing is joy. You bring me so much joy. And I, maybe I'm overstating this, but I don't think so. There's so much nuances of being careful about Timothy's emotions, just in these few words, that I, I see such a love of a father for a son. Now let's go over to Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 28, um, verse 23, it says, speaking of being careful of people's emotions, it says, he who rebukes a man will in the end gain more favor than he who has a flattering tongue. Now, I've read that verse for decades. I don't think I understood it until after 30, 40 years, because I used to think, Okay, yeah, so if you rebuke someone, eventually they appreciate it. But then I came to realize that um, the Bible is assuming some things there. Uh, when you rebuke someone, if you rebuke them harshly, let me give you a little hint, they're never, ever gonna appreciate it. They're never, ever, ever, ever gonna appreciate it. And and so there are some assumptions in here that it, it, if you rebuke a man, that this rebuke must have been with great love and great kindness and great hope. That, that this was a, a, an employee or a friend saying, brother, I, I see such hope for you and I don't want you to fall into this trap and I really believe God has great things for you. And, and the person who gave it, gave it out of a broken heart and please may I have permission just to share this one thing. And, the, and, and they knew that they'd probably be rejected and they still love them anyway. So harsh rebukes, you never get favor in the end. But loving, kind, caring rebukes, you will gain more favor in the end. So that tells me that this is a specifically a loving, kind, caring rebuke. If we ever have to give someone an honest answer, let it be so loving and kind and caring that even if they don't receive it at first, they eventually will appreciate it. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.